The best thing about Home Assistant is that it's open source and has thousands of integrations to different home automation products and services. Unfortunately, that's also one of the worst things about Home Assistant. I often run into problems trying to get some obscure product, service, or automation to work properly and it can be hard to figure out what's going on and how to get it working. I know that a lot of people have had the same problem, as I get comments, emails, and tweets from my video viewers every week asking for help. I really wish I could help you all out, but I have a day job that I need to keep in order to pay my rent, so I don't really get the time that I'd like to reply to everyone and help out. In this video, I want to show you the ways that I go about getting help with my home assistant and automation problems, so you don't get stuck or feel like you're on your own. Let's take a look. Hey Home Automation Guy, start the show. The good news is that Home Assistant has a strong and vibrant community built around it, and that means you never have to feel alone. There are two main places I go to for help when I need it. The first place I go is the Home Assistant Community Forums. These are online forums, or what an old man like me used to call message boards, that are hosted by Nabucasa. You can access these forums using any web browser by navigating to community.home-assistant.io. Here you can see that there are different sub-forums for different categories. There's categories for configuring Home Assistant, for sharing your projects, and a whole section of guides that show you step-by-step -step instructions for how to set different things up. If you have a problem or question about something Home Assistant related, I strongly urge that you search these community forums first to see if someone else has had a similar question that has already been answered before you go in and write a post asking for help. These forums are moderated by the Home Assistant community Basically just a bunch of helpful humans who donate their time to helping out others with home automation. It's polite not to waste their time by asking a question that has already been answered somewhere else. You can search the community by using the search box at the top of the page. But I find this to be a pretty shite user experience and prefer to use Google. If I search for Home Assistant and whatever problem or question I have, I find that the community forums are usually some of the first results that come back anyway. I can then read through two or three of these forum posts and generally find the answer that I'm looking for. Anyone can read these forums and posts without creating a user account, but if you want to post a question or reply to someone, you'll need to sign up for an account first. It's just like any other online platform. Provide your email address, username, and a password, and you can create an account. If you prefer, you can sign up with your GitHub account or your Home Assistant Cloud account if you happen to have one of those. Once you're signed up with an account, you can go ahead and ask a question inside the appropriate subforum based on what you need help with. Most of these subforums have a set of rules or guidelines about how to correctly ask your question so that you get the best possible chance of a response. These guidelines are usually pinned to the top of the forum, and I urge you to read them before posting. Let's look at the configuration subforum as an example. You can see at the top there is a post about how to ask a good question. Inside you'll find some tips and best practices for how and when to post. There are some basic guidelines like telling you that the official forum language is English, that you need to give your post a descriptive title, and to make sure that you explain what you're trying to achieve and what you've already tried. One of the most important things you need to do is properly format any code or YAML examples that you paste into your post so that others can easily read it. To do this, make sure you wrap any code samples in three backticks, which on my keyboard is the key on the top left next to the number one. This will format the code so that it's easy to read. It'll correctly preserve your spacing and any symbols, which will help people spot any syntax errors that may be causing you problems. Understanding these guidelines before you post will help make sure that you have the best chance of getting your question answered quickly and correctly. The other place I go to to find help or support with Home Assistant is the official Discord community. Discord is a platform that allows people to create online communities, but instead of acting like a forum, which has specific topics which conversations are grouped around, it acts more like an old school internet chat room with different channels for different topics. Also, unlike a forum, these chat rooms run on a third party platform that you need to access through the Discord application. You can download the Discord apps for free on Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android, and you'll also need to create a Discord account in order to access any of these communities. Remember IRC, the internet real-time chat platform? Well, Discord basically rebooted that idea and built a business around it tech companies, am I right? Creating a Discord account is similar to creating a Home Assistant Community Forum account. You'll need to provide your email address, username and password, as well as some other details. Once you have a Discord account and the app downloaded, you can join any number of communities, including the official Home Assistant one. A Discord community is known as a server. 
To get access to the Home Assistant Discord server, you can go to the Home Assistant website and click the Need Help button at the top right. From there, you can find the link to the Discord chat server, and this should open itself up inside the Discord app. Just like the community forums, the Discord server is broken down into subcategories called channels, which you can see listed on the left here. Clicking on a channel will take you inside it, and you can see the conversation that's happening in there in real time. The official Home Assistant server has tens of thousands of members in it at any given time, so it's a really great place to ask for help. Like any other community or chat room, there are a set of rules that you need to abide by in order to post within the channels. You can usually find these posted at the top of the channel list, and you need to usually agree to them before you post. If you're replying to a specific message in a channel, make sure that you use the reply button. This will help you and everyone else involved in your conversation keep track of what is being said. It's normal for there to be multiple conversations going on inside a single channel at the same time. And just like the community forums, make sure that you wrap any code or YAML that you post into a message with three backticks. This works the same way to format your code in a way that makes it easier to read and understand. If forums or Discord aren't your jam, then there are also Home Assistant Facebook groups, Home Assistant subreddits on Reddit, and Home Assistant experts on Twitter who will all most likely do their best to help you out. No matter where you go to ask for help, just always bear in mind that the people helping you on there are volunteers, so your question might not get answered quickly or even at all. Be respectful, patient, and try to search for an answer to your question before you post it. It's likely someone else has already had this problem before and been guided to a solution. I do my best to help out in these forums and in Discord when I can, but as I mentioned, it's really hard for me to find the time alongside my day job and other life commitments. If you've emailed, tweeted, or commented a question to me and I've not been able to reply, then I really do apologize. I wish there were more hours in the day that I could use to participate in the community. By all means, please continue to ask me questions in the comments of my videos, and I will try to answer them when I can. I've also seen many instances where one of my video viewers answers a question asked by another viewer, and that really warms my heart. I absolutely love the Home Assistant community, and everyone is always doing their best to help each other out, and that is friggin' awesome. I'm going to keep creating videos about Home Automation and Home Assistant, and I'm going to do my best to explain in the right amount of detail the how and the why behind what I'm doing. If the videos get really technical, I'll always try and write a companion blog post to go with them, which gives more details and code samples to copy and paste directly into your environments. But I can't predict every problem and edge case that may come up when these automations are set up in a slightly different environment to my own. Hopefully with these tips, you'll be able to get help with your setup if you need it. If you want to know more about how I use Home Assistant in my smart home, then you should subscribe to the channel so that you can find out when I release new videos, and then together we can make your home smarter.